look at me I know exactly what they talk about when I'm not around I got no time for this as a matter of fact every day is my birthday oh I hope you heard me take a look outside it's a beautiful day it's a beautiful day, yeah. I'm gonna keep it that way, that way, yeah. Take a real good look, it's a beautiful day, yeah. It's a beautiful day, yeah. I'm gonna keep it that way. Yeah, it's a beautiful day. So let's get into uh, these some of these comments here. Uh, the very first one we got from Randomus with Michael Brown. He says, hey, can you call out hard truths, please? He's blocked me multiple times, and a true Christian doesn't go after their own, and he needs to, needs to be called out, thanks, and God bless. So, uh, first of all, I want to say that there's a fine line between uh, calling out somebody's doctrine and somebody's uh, whether somebody's saved or not saved. Um, and I've probably tripped over that line a few times, but I, I, I want to be careful, I really do, of not ever saying that anybody is either saved or not saved. Okay? Because um, I don't know. There's no way to know if anybody's saved or not saved. Jesus says that we shall know them by their fruits, and that's the fruits is what they're preaching and teaching and what they believe. Okay? So if somebody's not teaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, <clears throat> then by all means we we should correct them absolutely if we got the opportunity we now we don't want to make a big stink of it because we're not going to convince anybody of anything we can plant the seeds and trust God that those seeds um, that are planted um, are embedded in those who desire the truth all right so <clears throat> excuse me so I you know I'm not going to call out anybody and say they're not saved or unsaved, but let's take a look at this fellow, Hard Truths, and I'm not sure who it is, so I, I did a, a search for a channel search, and the first one that comes up is this guy right here. Alright, and so, you know, I'm not going to look at this ridiculous stuff, an hour for this and an hour for that, uh, coming to America, the judgment, okay, and I'm, I'm sorry buddy, but judgment is coming to the whole world. Alright, and the insinuation, if you will, that America is going to get judged is that America is the great whore of Revelation 17, and it's not. All right. Any people want to look at anything but the simple truth, and that the simple truth is the great whore is the Roman Catholic Church. It's the Roman Empire. It goes all the way back to Daniel as the fourth beast, and the beast of Revelation is the great whore. And it's the Roman Empire. We we know that the Roman Empire is in play at the time that the baby Jesus, and we know that um, uh, when it says the beast that was and is not and yet is is the transformation from the physical empire to the spiritual empire. The Roman Empire transformed into the Roman Catholic Church. Anyway, so let's get into this one right here: correction of the daily sacrifice, and let's see what this fella has for this this is only two minutes but uh, it's after a minute it's going to be tough so i'm just going to go about a minute in hey guys just want to come on here real quick and make a correction video uh this mistake was made in the third temple video about the daily set all right so first of all let me just say the, the third temple uh, you're not going to find that in the bible anyway jesus destroyed the temple and rebuilt it himself all right, yeah. This is uh, to me uh, like a red flag or whatever you want to call it uh, to see if people understand anything at all about the Bible. I, I, I'm not kidding you. It, to me, it seems like sometimes people they don't even read the Bible, but they love to teach it, but they won't read it. And there is no, you know. <laughs> There's no third temple that's going to be built. It's not prophesied as the Antichrist building the third temple. It's not prophesied that 
any, there's, it's not there in the Bible. People teach it. I get it because the Old Testament and the, in the Old Testament it was talking about Jesus destroying the temple and rebuilding it himself, which is the body. And he died, defeated death, destroyed the temple, and then resurrected, rebuilt the temple, and now through him we might have eternal life. All right, so where are we at here? Sacrifice. I misinterpreted what that is. Um, but this is one of God's prophetesses. Her name is Celestial. I'll leave her information linked in the description. But she's going to tell us what the daily sacrifice really is. The Antichrist will take away my name, my church, my daily sacrifice. People are still arguing about what the daily sacrifice is. The daily sacrifice is prayer. The lifting of my hands as sacrifice. And the Lord said it himself in that prophecy, the man of sin, that I will link either in the comments or in the description box. He said... Yeah, okay, so uh, this is utterly ridiculous. Again, it's as if people have never read the Bible and certainly don't have any understanding of it. She's saying that the daily sacrifice is prayer. Now, she's not the only one. Let's be fair about this. Um, she's getting this from other people. She's not getting it from God, and she's not certainly not getting it from the Bible. All right, and so uh, I'm not going to play the rest of this, but at the end, this guy says, this woman is the Lord God Almighty. Listen up. This is about what daily sacrifice is. This came straight from the Lord came straight from the Lord. That's not the Lord. She's a 14-year-old girl. And a 14-year-old girl is not the Lord. I'm sorry. She's not. So let's take a look at daily sacrifice. Now there's a couple of things. I mean, one thing to understand that should be obvious. There were offerings made to God all the way back to Cain and Abel. Right? Cain uh, was making... Uh, plant offerings and Abel was making animal offerings. Okay, so the daily sacrifice is an offering to God. And so we read in the Old Testament uh, about this, about these daily sacrifices. Okay, these daily offerings, if you will. Okay, after this manner you shall offer daily. All right, so what they did is they would offer the blood of bulls and goats as uh, an offering to God for their uh, you know their inequities or their shortcomings or what have you um, but the, and that's what they did was, that's what they've always done right because uh, they felt they owed it to God and they did but it, this is not prayer it, it's never been prayer that, that's just made up from somebody that either doesn't understand or is trying to uh, deceive the chosen people of God. I, I don't know. It's not true. Either way you look at it. All right. Now, specifically, this phrase, daily sacrifice, is in Daniel. Okay. And then, uh, so I want to take a look at, I want to keep this short, if that's even possible. All right. So the daily sacrifice here. I read these two verses here. An arm shall stand on his part, and arms are the like the soldiers or the agents of the king, if you will. Uh, which in this case is talking about the fourth beast, uh, his agents. And arms shall stand on his part. Agents or agencies, however you want to look at it. And they shall pollute the sanctuary strength and shall take away the daily sacrifice. Okay, And they shall place the abomination that makes desolate. Now... The abomination that makes desolate is um, essentially it's unbelief. All right, they've this, it's this alternative worldview that they think they've they've created that does not include the grace of God and our Lord Jesus Christ. All right, this now you got to remember this is Daniel. This is the Old Testament. This is leading up to the time of baby Jesus, to the time of the death of Jesus, and the resurrection of Jesus and the ascent. Uh, ascension of Jesus into heaven and his promise of his return. This is all leading up to that. And from the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away and the abomination that makes desolate set up, there shall be 1,290 days. Blessed is he that 
endures until uh, 13, 35 days, uh, which means after the end of the world. So let's go to, I'm going to try to make this short. Let's go to, uh, uh, what am I looking for here? From the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away, the abomination that makes desolate set up. Now, now Jesus talks about the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel. This is it. And that abomination of desolation is unbelief. Okay, so look, this is what I want to show you. So you remember in Matthew 24 where it says, uh, what, shall, what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? Daniel's asked basically the same thing. So it's important to understand there's no contradiction between Daniel and anything in the New Testament. Uh, all we have to do is be able to connect the dots. Okay, Many shall be purified and made white and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. And from the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away, and the abomination that makes desolate set up, there shall be um, you know, 12, 1290. Blessed is he that waits and comes to 1335. All right, so this is very simple. Uh, people make way too big of a deal out of this. I'm telling you, the daily sacrifice is, is Jesus. So in the Old Testament, you got to understand that they were offering daily sacrifice. And we could do this here, if this helps. So they would, um, the daily meat offerings, and we see this multiple times, the daily sacrifice, daily burnt offerings, daily offerings, and so on and so forth. This was what they did. But now, um, Jesus has offered his body once for all. All right, so they thought they took away the daily sacrifice, and they didn't because the Lord Jesus Christ has offered his body once for all. You ever wonder why the Jews don't, you know, do all this... Uh, you know, like they did in the Old Testament, uh, the blood, the offering of blood and uh, goats and all that sort of stuff. Uh, so they thought they took it away, but they didn't. Jesus offered his body once for all, for it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats should take away sins. So all this, uh, the sacrifices that they were giving, this was, was not the true sacrifice, the true offering of God. The only way a true offering could be given to God is by the body of Jesus Christ who is is perfect and he became sin for us who had no sin all right so I mean that that's all that's talking about here in Matthew 8 11 12 the daily sacrifice uh, was fulfilled by our Lord Jesus Christ and it's a one-time sacrifice once for all Alright, um, if I could just keep it short like that, let me, uh, so in other words, it's not a prayer at all, it's, it, you know, I'm sure that 14 year old girl, uh, she's, uh, learning and all that sort of stuff, and I'm not gonna try to take any way, anything away from her or him, but I'm telling you, these guys, they don't have any understanding, just read the Bible, just read the Bible and believe it's from God because it is. Stop listening to men. Now I get it. A lot of people out there are teaching this idea that the daily sacrifice is prayer. It's not found in the Bible anywhere. It's not there and it's not what it means. Alright, and so that's the best I can do, Michael Brown. Um, if there was something like a video specifically, share that with me and, and I'll break that down if you would like. But, um, that one and see that this kind of fires me up a little bit about Daniel because people try to make such a big deal about Daniel if they're teaching something that you can't find in the New Testament then to be at the very least be very suspicious at the very least uh, because there has to be a connection it can't be a standalone verse in the Old Testament that means something that's never spoken of in the rest of the Bible that there's something wrong with that. Just like what we, what I talked about with Revelation 20, when it talks about the thousand years, if you can't connect that with anything else in the Bible, there's a problem with your doctrine. 
Alright, so see what I mean? I get fired up about this stuff. Come on. Alright, zero tolerance. Is it Chinese or SMTH LMAO unsubscribed? Well, um, look, I don't care. Unsubscribe, subscribe, watch, don't watch, get mad, get happy, I don't care. I really don't, man. I've never cared. All I want is the truth just give me the truth and I'm guessing the Chinese comment is because people like to go to the Greek and the Hebrew and I say why not go to the Chinese what's the difference it don't mean nothing to me I don't understand none of it I barely understand English but it's the only language I know and I'm not gonna put up with this idea I'm not gonna accept this I don't accept this idea at all that God can't speak English. Now, what kind of God do you worship that is un unable, or unable, excuse me, unable to give us His Word in the language that we are born in? And in case you don't know, I, I'm telling you, the Word of God endures all languages for all time, forever and ever. Alright, so if you don't believe there's a perfect Bible in the English language, then write your own Bible and share it with me. I want to look at it. I want to know the truth. All I care about is the truth. Alright, so you get mad and unsubscribe. I don't care, buddy. That's too bad, man. I don't know what I'm, you know. If I'm wrong about something, just say it. Just tell me. We'll talk about it. Richie. Jacobs, you're the one who helped me understand the timeline. It's so simple. It is so simple. It really is, man. Uh, and <clears throat> the thing is, if it, if everybody understood it was so simple, you wouldn't be able to make movies, write books, and produce TV series uh, that you know that that are you know sci-fi related, zombie related. It, it's really that simple. And it's all throughout the Bible. It's not just a verse here or there. It's all. It's from the beginning of the Bible to the very end of the Bible. There's a coming, a judgment day. And Daniel was asked, as I showed, showed you, and Jesus was asked, what shall be the end of the world? And the end of the world is judgment day. It's the great day of the Lord. It's when the saved and unsaved are separated. Just like what Jesus talks about. And, you know... Uh, Somewhere in the Bible, I can't remember nothing, Matthew 13, I wanted to say it, but I hate to be wrong, Get, but gather the wheat into my barn. Let them grow together until the harvest. The harvest is when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. It's very simple. It really is. But when you add in this thousand year zombie period of saved people transformed into their glorified body their incorruptible flesh living among people that are corruptible that are corrupt that are run around like zombies apparently I, I you know I don't really know because is there the zombie period is it during the thousand years or is the zombie period after the thousand years when Jesus Christ gives up his reign he reigns for a thousand years and then he stops. Apparently. That's what they're teaching. That's not what the Bible says. The reason we are in this thousand year period is because this is a unique time period. It's unlike the time period that it was before baby Jesus. And it's unlike the time period that's coming after the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's a time um, when, um, you know, Jesus has... Look, it's... <laughs> I'm going to just go on and on. You hopefully understand about our Lord Jesus Christ, that he died, defeated death, and rose again. And now we that believe in him are the people of God. We're the chosen of God. We are the elect of God. We are a holy nation, a royal priesthood. All right. I've been confused a long time. Now I get it, I, and so was I, man. You know, you hear so many people teaching so many different things, but when it when you boil it down, you got to go to what the Bible says, really, and, and just read what the Bible says and try to learn and understand from God, because there are so many men out there trying to confuse everything, and 
yeah, maybe some of it's deliberate, but uh, for the most part, it's because they're blind themselves. So don't find, don't follow blind people. Follow the Word of God. These other teachers have people going in different directions. They teach all these things that have to happen first. Building of this antichrist. Yeah, kind of like what I just was sharing you. The idea of a third temple. Well, it's not there. The idea of a, of, you know, the futurist view of well, there's coming an antichrist and his name is Barack Obama. Well, that's not true either. He's not coming back. And Ronald Reagan's not coming back. And that's the first one that I ever, the first time I ever heard about the antichrist. Well, it's, I heard it on the radio, and it's Ronald Reagan, Ronald Wilson Reagan, six six six, six letters in Ronald, six letters in Wilson, six letters in Reagan, six six six. It's got to be the Antichrist. Well, no, it it wasn't Ronald Reagan, and <laughs> it you know that, that's how ridiculous people are. They'll believe anything but the simple truth that the Antichrist is. The one that calls himself the Holy Father and is in is the leader, if you will, of over a billion people all around the world. So I could get into that, and I better stop now. All right. So it's only for them with eyes to see. Okay. So that it, obviously not everybody's going to have eyes to see. So if you get it, then then you're blessed, right? Good for you. All right. So thanks for that comment. It, it, there is so much ridiculousness. It re there really is, Richie. And so let's let's attack it head on. All right. Let's challenge these people. If you've got eyes to see it, man, you've got a gift, and, and go out there and use it, and say, hey, here's the truth. You can't stand up to it, and and show it. Seek. One one zero. Susan, seek. Seeking Z, uh, Susan. I'm not sure what that means. But I have asked people to show me another verse other than Revelation 20 that speaks of a thousand year reign and cannot know because it's not there. Still, they freak out when I tell them there is no thousand year reign. They think I am deceived because I believe this. Right. So if you and this, these other people, they all we all sit around. Okay, all of us sit around and look but just look just open up it's not gonna hurt you it's not it's not gonna burn your fingers to open up your Bible I promise you and you look just you know you could type in rain here and sort of highlight that word rain right there it doesn't say Jesus reigns does it they lived and reigned with Christ they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him. Reign with. Reigned with and reign with. No mention at all of Jesus Christ in uh, reigning a thousand years. And uh, Look, what happens after? What happens after the thousand years? The zombies take over, and there's no more Jesus Christ, and we're all going to die. I mean, what is you? what are you teaching? Really? What happens when Jesus Christ stops reigning? If that's what you're teaching, just be honest and think what think it through. Just follow that logic, man. It's the same thing. When you believe that you are an evolved monkey, when you believe you're a super monkey, just think it through. Logically. Logically, it makes sense that there would be UFO aliens on other planets. It's logical. But what you're teaching this idea of a thousand year reign of Jesus Christ, it's not logical. There's not any thought being put into it at all. At least give the evolutionists some credit for thinking this thing out and building a logical progression. It's all false, but at least it's thought out. There's no thought at all in this idea of Jesus Christ reigning a thousand years, none whatsoever. And so I want to challenge people Tell me more. Tell me exactly what you believe. Tell me about this time when Jesus Christ stops reigning at the end of the thousand years. Just talk about it, man. Don't just, you know, drive by and uh, shoot your bullets and keep on driving. Let's sit down and uh, analyze it and talk about it and think it through. Come on. All right, so I think that's it. 
I've went on too long. But uh, keep you know keep your comments going going. I appreciate all your thoughts. You know if, if I'm wrong, man, hey, just tell me. I'll address it. If I'm not being fair, tell me that too. Because I, if I haven't been fair to you know the, this 14-year-old uh, girl or this 20-year-old man, then tell me. You know. I want to treat everybody fair, but you know, don't listen to the 14 year old girl, don't listen to the 20 year old man, don't listen to this old man. Read your Bible. What's your Bible say? That way, yeah. so spend your hours on what you think I've Oh, I'm in your life I love him here way too long I want to spend my life With those who start me right Your heart is frozen over I'll fall if over Take a look outside It's a beautiful day Yeah, it's a beautiful day I'm gonna keep that way that way, yeah. Take a real good look, it's a beautiful day. Yeah, it's a beautiful day. I'm gonna keep it that way, that way, yeah.